Welcome to Design World's How to Calculate series, where you learn how to apply the most important equations for sizing, selecting, and comparing linear bearings. In this session, we'll learn how to determine the mean equivalent dynamic load of a recirculating ball or roller bearing. In most linear motion applications, the load on the system isn't constant. It varies throughout the move cycle. For example, in a dispensing application, the load on a linear actuator will start out as the weight of the dispensing apparatus plus the full weight of the media being dispensed. But as the actuator dispenses the product and the dispensed media is used up, the load on the system gradually decreases. Then, when the dispensed media is fully replenished in the system, the load is at its maximum again. We know that the L10 life of a recirculating ball or roller bearing depends on the applied load, but how do we account for loads that aren't consistent? The way to do this is to use the mean equivalent dynamic load, which is the amount of constant loading that would produce the same effect on bearing life as all the various loads and times combined. Finding the mean equivalent dynamic load is relatively simple, even though the equation may look intimidating. You simply take into account each discrete loading phase and the percentage of the total travel that each load is applied over the course of the move cycle. Each discrete load is multiplied by the distance traveled while that load is applied. Then the entire equation is divided by the total travel. This converts the travel in each discrete phase to a percentage of the total travel. For example, let's say an actuator is used in a pick and place application, where it moves to a position, picks up a part that weighs 120 newtons, then moves to another position and places the part. After placing the part, the actuator moves back to the start position and the cycle starts over. The first move segment from the start position to the location of the part is 600 millimeters, and the actuator is only carrying the gripper, which weighs 60 newtons. The second move segment, where the actuator picks up the part and moves it to the next position, is 1,000 millimeters, and now the actuator is carrying both the gripper and the part for a total of 180 newtons. After the part is placed, the actuator moves 1,600 millimeters back to the original position, but now it's only carrying the gripper at 60 newtons. So to summarize, the actuator's loading is 60 newtons for 600 millimeters, 180 newtons for 1,000 millimeters, and 60 newtons for 1,600 millimeters. So the mean equivalent dynamic load equation would look like this. Notice that the total travel is 3,200 millimeters, since the move includes a total of 1,600 millimeters in one direction, plus the 1,600 millimeters return travel to the original starting position. Also notice that the load is shown in brackets, meaning that we're taking the absolute value of the load. So even if the load is acting in the reverse direction, it's still added to, rather than subtracted from, the total load. So the mean equivalent dynamic load, F sub m, in this application is 125.4 newtons. It would have been easy to take the maximum load of 180 newtons as the basis for sizing in this application. But as we can see here, if we had done that, we would have overestimated the load by approximately 50%. You might be tempted to think, well, that's a healthy safety factor or margin of error, but significantly overestimating the load can lead to oversized components which are more costly and add unnecessary weight, inertia, and friction with a compound effect on the overall system, requiring stronger support structures, larger motors, and adding to the cost, size, and inefficiency of the overall system. For more information on linear bearings and other linear motion topics, visit LinearMotionTips.com or DesignWorldOnline.com. Thanks for watching.